Welcome, welcome, friends. I hope you're ready to fight. How goes it? Always. Just great. Not let myself forget this time. Forget. Oh, yeah. (laughs) What's the vibe? I'm going to rely on our producer to handle the vibe check. Um, Crack my cold one. It's never ending. You know, just in class yesterday, I was. It will end when I receive a sponsorship. (laughs) Just in class yesterday, I was trying to like describe the vibe of the classroom to the class. Mm -hmm. It just it doesn't work. It really doesn't, and we wind up doing it a lot, which is terrible for an audio medium. Yeah, Yeah. I was like, it's it's very chill, but like not in a good way. Like (laughs) subdued. That was my attempt. Perhaps. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, that might have been the word. Yeah, I decided to get a little extra weird with it today for reasons unknown. Kind of just felt like it for our audio-only people. I'm wearing full blackout sclera lenses right now. Oh, I can't even tell because of the glare on your glasses. Wait, no. Yeah, it's just, I, all I see is your ring light. There we go. Now I see you. <laughs> there we go. Um. Yeah, anything else going on? No, I live a, a boring life. I can't say that I live the most exciting life in the world either. However, I did go see Power Wolf again last Friday. Jesus, Bridget. Oh, man, it was that long ago. Yeah. I know, right? Um, and I had an absolutely delightful time. I wound up on their um, their little like Instagram real recap vid twice. So pick out my glowing wolf mask. That you so kindly printed for me. Got compliments on that. Loved it. And also, finally fucking checked crowd surfing off the bucket list. Nice. I'm proud of myself. And also, I spent so much time in that pit. Everything hurt. In a good way. And also, it makes me want... Like, it was gen... This has given me genuine workout motivation in that I want to be stronger so that I can last longer in the Lorna Shore pit. I mean... Whatever works, I guess. Good so, tools. Also, just in general, uh, Power Wolf puts on a great fucking show. I love those guys. I know that they're not out there necessarily like, oh, redefining like metal as a genre, but they're great musicians who put on a really fucking entertaining show. Never had a bad experience. Like, everyone goes hard. Everyone is just having so much fun. So, highly recommend. But that was my big recent adventure, and honestly, that's going to be it until Twin Temple in the beginning of October. Yeah, I'm, I'm sort of torn because I, I had an outing that both qualifies for this and the worsening. I'm going to let you make that call. I'll, I'll leave out the worsening parts of it. How about that? Okay. What was your because outing? Flower City Comic Con on Saturday. Nice. Um, and so I'm going to leave out like the nerd stuff that made me worse. But let me tell you, this was a weird con for the reason that it was held in a sports complex, which 
So okay. the under room is like an artificial turf, whatever. But the thing is, all of the panel rooms were tents outside. So you had to leave the building and go sit in bleachers in a tent to watch the panels. And there were three of these tents. Very odd. You, yeah. And the thing is, you would think the weather wouldn't be so bad in the middle of September. No, it was like 80 something degrees. No, because we're killing and, the planet. Yeah, no, it was miserable outside. <laughs> like, and the tents were so hot because they were closed. Yikes. And, but at least, you know, the indoor parts of it, like, oh, yeah, there's at least sort of AC. Like, it wasn't cold, but it was tolerable. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't too far into the day that all of a sudden the fire alarms start going off. And everybody has to go outside. Unbelievable. Eventually, we used that opportunity to get Dippin' Dots because it was a Dippin' Dots truck there. Nice. But by the time we went back in, I was like, man, is it just me or has it gotten really hot in here? Apparently, a fuse had blown, so there was no more air conditioning. Oh, no. Yeah. Um, That's not good. Nope. Yeah, I was like drenched in sweat all day. That was like that the, is very not good. People were just all day complaining. That was every conversation about how hot it was. Like every vendor you walk up to, they're like, oh, because they're just sitting still sweating. Mm -hmm. so oh, yeah. No, I can see that. I've had some, and here's the thing as a person who has done New York City Comic Con multiple times, I've had some very sweaty cosplay experiences, but nothing like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, like, it was it was gross. I don't want to be graphic about the level of sweat, but it was, like, it was visible. <laughs> like, you know, around, like, my chest and stuff like that, you know, the, where the sweat drips on your neck. Like, Cute. that level. Yeah, it was so gross. And certain parts of the room were hotter than others. It was... So, like, I suppose you it would be really kind of... to see it. Yeah, I suppose it would be nice if it were, like, cool weather. Mm. You know, like, mid-60s or something. But, like... I, I can't say I was a fan. That's why I try to plan my cosplays based on, like, time of year often. Like, if I know I'm going to be doing yeah. a ton of layers, I'll save that for, save that for, like, a fall or a winter con. If I'm going to get slutty with it, summer, maybe. Yeah, th in this case, I was just wearing a t-shirt and jeans. I didn't even, because it was, like, 60 when I left the house and I was like oh I better wear jeans you know I'll get chilly mm -hmm. <laughs> and me not looking ahead I like brought a jacket and everything just in case it was chilly in the AC you know I, I mean no a valid concern yeah but I had no idea what I was in for mm -hmm. it's very bizarre well I hope you at least had a little fun yeah yeah, All right. Got to see uh, John Barrowman. He was a good time. Nice. He um, seemed very confused that he was in a tent in a field, but <laughs> it happens. Yeah, I really don't think I have much else for the vibe check. So um, with that, I just I just have something that I want us to talk about right off the bat. It's not anything that's like, this isn't a debate. This isn't necessarily relevant to anything. This has just been a thing that's on the internet that I fucking love. I want to talk about that little goddamn hippo. I love her. Mu Dang, that hippo in like Korea or Thailand. I'm not sure exactly which country the zoo that houses Mu Dang is in, but I am obsessed with this little shit. Look at her. Incredible. Yeah. She is always blurry, screaming, possibly being doused in water. There are a couple other, uh, I have two more examples of her just being a delight that mm -hmm. I believe are going to be uh, put on screen at some point, but I just love her so much. God tier meme. Um, I wish I was her. Like, look at this. I wish I was a little pygmy hippo. So I'm assuming that this is like uh, popular on the, the webs right now? Oh, very much so. Is that like a like a thing that's being traded around? Kind of? Yep. Lots of, lots of Mudang content. 
I love don't her understand. So much. There's nothing because to understand. She's no, just... no, 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 no. Let 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 me explain. Okay. I don't I don't understand because when I look at that thing, all I see is a future murderer. Oh come on! I don't because care about hippos. That. Yeah, no hippos, hippos will are fuck the you deadliest up. mammal in Africa. Yeah, they will they kill like thousands of people every year. Yeah, they will absolutely fuck you up. But for now. She's precious and I love her so much. No, that's a killing machine. Nope, love her. Also, apparently, there's the thing where she like bites the tr the guy in the knee, and I'm like, no, 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 don't. <sighs> she's getting a taste for human flesh. But also, she's a pygmy hippo, so she's not going to be that gigantic. They still can average, uh, like I forget how many tons. Whatever. I, I was googling uh, hippo facts earlier. I love that for you. Also, apparently, Mudang like roughly translates to either bouncy pig or pork patty. Mm -hmm, and I just mm -hmm. love I her just, so I did much. See that. That's all. I just I wanted to make sure that people know about her. She's an icon. I wish I was her. Yeah, no. To to me, this is an opportunity to educate people about how freaking scary they are. They can run up to thirty miles an hour. Yeah, it's pretty scary. But also, that that's picture of her, like, screaming where and being grabbed, that is how your email finds me. Hmm. Did you know that they secrete a red substance that people used to think was blood? Oh, yeah. Aren't they trying to figure out how, like, it protects their skin from the sun, like, really, really well. People are, like, studying that to be like, hmm, sunscreen. <laughs> Yeah, it's it protects them from the sun. It keeps their skin moisturized, and it prevents like bacteria. Sorry, I think infections. my son just made a noise, and I'm trying to figure out if I should be concerned or not. I don't think so. I think we're good. Anyway, but I yeah, love it having serves a cat. several purposes. Yeah, which is is kind of wild. But people used to think they sweat blood. I mean, I understand, like you see red liquid coming out of a living creature and the only context you have is that of like, you know, is one without modern scientific advancements. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, I just, I know a lot of people think hippos are cute. I am not amongst them. Okay. Well, um, is my point. <laughs> Cause they, don't they are just scary. I don't care that she could murder me. It would be an honor. Murder machines. The game Hungry Hungry Hippos is upsetting. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I used to love it as a kid. No. But that I was just... before I knew the sheer murderous intent that lies within every hippo. I Plastic love, or otherwise. love her so much. <laughs> it would be an honor to be killed by Mudang. And no, she's so you. fucking adorable. No, thank you. I'm more afraid of hippos than I am of lions. They kill more people than lions. I mean, uh, I mean, sure. <laughs> I'm not disputing the facts. Just this tiny little hippo is adorable. Nope. I can't. I just can't. And it's always wet because it's secreting I forget the name of the acid. The what? The the sunblock stuff. It's a form of acid. Oh. Huh. The more you know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's really all I have to say. I just would die for her. She's great. Well, anyway. One of us. <laughs> um you have a mac and cheese update for us. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's why I'm like me. <laughs> just text you i have a mac and cheese update for tonight <laughs> as i'm sitting there eating mac and cheese things that you don't prepare for as a grown adult or you don't think is going to happen when you're a kid you don't think is going to happen as a grown adult things like this i think chris wants to wants to fight us like we're about what, to engage about in fisticuffs about... He's still saying mac and cheese is overrated. Oh my god. Give it up. <laughs> Hang on, I gotta open up the chat for this so I can add my two cents. <laughs> mac and cheese is overrated. 
You know, I will happily make you die on that hill and your aliens hill for the second episode of whatever happens happens <laughs> after we schedule the first episode, which is whatever happens I was happens. Say. Psychological torture edition. I will be That's putting fun. that in the group chat as soon as humanly possible. Um, but okay, anyway, this relates. I don't disagree with you there, but I think we're gonna have to <laughs> save it for when for when we all talk about this together. <laughs> and not eat mac and cheese. Get fucked. Anyway, what is your update? Well, it was just last week we were talking about, like, liquid versus powdered cheese. And I still, and, and again, it's sinister. It has an it, energy that I don't like whether or not that makes any sense. It cannot be sinister. Um... <laughs> Okay. Anyway, um, so we were talking about that, and you said that the Annie's Mac with the liquid cheese wasn't as good as the powdered cheese, and I said I could not speak to that because I had not had their liquid version. Mm -hmm. So, now I have. It's and so good, I can it? now speak to that. So, I think there are three important points. Okay. One, I don't like it as much as the powdered. I never said it tasted better. I said it was more convenient. Yeah, okay. No, that's fine. I so agree I don't with like you it as much. Front. Yeah. I don't like it as much. But number two, I think I know the reason why. Explain. Be because when you make the powdered version, you put butter in it and it gives it like that full uh, richness. And that's, that's what's missing. I just didn't taste the butteriness. You're so right. That's. That's the difference. Um, and then the third point is, it does, however, taste more like actual cheese. I suppose. Yeah, again, I'm and still, the fact that it's better and the fact that I usually have some form of like actual dairy product in my house to begin with, like it's kind of yeah. just a no contest thing for me. Yeah. I, I think the, the fact that it tastes more cheese-like was evidenced by my cats who tried to maul me to get at it. Love it. It was very strange. Not like I don't eat mac and cheese often. And, mm -hmm. you know, Luna begs for everything, so that's pretty normal. Yeah. But, like, she was trying to climb over my arm to get to it, and even Nyx was trying to get her face in it. I'm like, ah, cats love dairy. So that was, that was my evidence. <laughs> okay. I'll buy it. But thank you for providing yeah. us your actual scientific opinion now. Yes, uh, I felt it was important to update that. Yeah, I, and I think that that's going to be like a blanket thing that most of the time when you get liquid cheese, it's not going to have that butteriness to it. So I don't know if it could ever be as good. And I feel like you can't add your own butter because it might get too liquidy. And Soupy. this is why I don't like the energy of it, even though it is perhaps less suspect chemically than powdered cheese. Yeah, but again, the convenience. I just yeah, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm not arguing yeah. with you there. I just also, again, always have pr some form of either. Like, if I don't have milk, I can use half and half. It really doesn't make that much of a yeah, difference. No. So I don't usually have dairy. I'm an almond milk person, and it just yeah, it doesn't work. <laughs> I no, never tried I would it, but it doesn't. I've never tried it. Never going to. Nope. Don't do. It. You know what I've always wanted to do? I've always wanted to. Uh, use two packets of cheese powder for one box of mac and cheese, but then I would have a box of cheeseless mac that I don't know what to do with. No. Oh, I mean, the cheeseless mac, you can just cook the mac and put a different sauce on it. This is true. I do have Trader Joe's Alfredo sauce. Yeah, it's just pasta. You can put anything So I might have just pasta. solved my own problem there. Anyway. You mean I solved your problem? <laughs> yeah, that. <laughs> Thank you. I think I have one more important important question relative to Chris's comments here. Are you saying you keep saying it's overrated? Do you not like it that much, or do you not like it at all? Because I think that's important, right? It's one thing to be like, "Oh, it's fine," another to be like, "Ew, it's gross. I can't stand it." Yeah, if you're wrong, if you don't like it at all. Okay. There's good mac and so, cheese, but it's very rare. Fascinating. Okay. 
Yeah, especially if you make like homemade mac and cheese with like oh, actual cheese. My mom's homemade mac and cheese. Are you <sighs> fucking kidding me. Mwah, yeah. Delicious. Too lazy to do that though. I should make that sometime. Mm, mac and cheese. I'll figure some vacation out. Anyway. I meant to text you mac and cheese earlier instead of mac and cheese. Mac and cheese. Oh, you know I like I, the, macking. Yeah. Heating mm -hmm. up macing cheese in the Michael wave. Mm -hmm. There's a meme that rewired my that rewired my brain on impact. That's a throwback I, to an old episode where honestly I probably did wind up bringing that up because it has not left my brain a single day since I saw it. Yeah, yeah. I meant to text that, but I was eating mac and cheese with one hand and texting with the other. Like I had a bowl of mac in this hand. Yeah, <laughs> and that's why I sent yeah. you the wrong meme. Understood. Too, as oh, well as <laughs> I just thought that was relevant because you and I were having similar thoughts. It was, but I didn't realize it had the text at the top. Okay, and I didn't see it until I hit send, and I was like, "No, that's not the one I meant." Um, and it was approximately two minutes later. I was double checking my schedule for a meeting I had today and realized that I was supposed to be at the orthodontist in five minutes. Because I had it in my head that it was at 2.30, but it was at 2, apparently. And so oh, I just wow. chucked my Mac in the fridge and put on shoes and ran out the door. <laughs> I love so, that for you. Well, you made I didn't it, get to, I would assume. Yeah. I hope. Yeah. I just didn't get to provide the follow-up to explain why it was the wrong meme, because I was uh, panicking. And see how I had no thoughts about that whatsoever? Mac and yeah. fleas. <laughs> Hold on. I sure did. <laughs> I ate Mac and then I fled. Mac didn't fled. Not bad. Uh, but yeah, again, the fact that like, that didn't time. even register for me at all, I think, just speaks to the sorts of conversations that we have, <laughs> even while off the air. They're the just random nature of them. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> because it's, I... it's not better off the air. It's yeah. just as meandering and pointless and scattered. Yeah, because uh, what was the text at the top of it? It was, uh, there it is. When you're arguing on the internet and a random person comes and backs you up, right? And I sent the, this. The connection. Yeah, with the image. Yeah. And I sent this, like, probably, like, seconds after you had, you know, acknowledged my mac and cheese update comment. <laughs> and you are just immediately responded, always a good feeling. Yeah, <laughs> no <laughs> questions whatsoever. <laughs> Actually, I think one of the funniest screenshots that I've ever saved to my phone was I was looking for something back in our messages, like something that you had sent me or whatever, but I came across, you had sent a photo of uh, Nicolas Cage sweatpants. You sent that to me. Mm. Mm -hmm. Immediately followed by a quote from the Satanic Bible, and then several <laughs> hours pass, another message from me. Do you know how to French braid? <laughs> <laughs> oh, was that right before Mid Hudson last year? Very possible. It was, there I was think it was. Big energy of now we don't have time to unpack all of that. <laughs> yeah, I think it was because you wanted your hair French braided for one of your cosplays, mm -hmm. I think. And I think it was yep. the same one where we dyed my hair, which look, it's almost done growing out. <laughs> Oh yeah, look at that. And that was a that was a whole ass year ago. Wow, your hair grows fast. Fast? Well, it was up to here. The bleach was eventually was up to here, so pretty impressive. Mm. I don't know. Anyway, um, well, that took a fun little path, didn't it? Yeah. Would we like to go into the asshole of the week? Sure. All right. Um, so, actually, I found this one and might bring up a second one. We'll see. Okay. But this first one I have is, am I the asshole for not allowing my stepdaughter to bring her boyfriend to our wedding? This has been judged already. I will uh, keep that a secret until we're done talking about this. <clears throat> My fiancé and I are having a small wedding next month with only close family friends. We recently finalized the guest list. My soon-to-be stepdaughter, 21F, was not happy to find out that her boyfriend would not be invited, but her older brother's girlfriend is. 
She's trying to make it seem like we're being sexist slash ageist by not inviting him. I explained to her my reasoning for not wanting him there. They've only been dating 11 months, whereas her brother has been with his girlfriend for over three years. Also, neither her dad or I really know her boyfriend that well, whereas I've become quite good friends with her brother's girlfriend. Maybe she'll still be with this guy in 20 years and it'll be kind of sad we didn't invite him to the wedding, but most likely they won't last and I will be thankful I didn't invite basically a stranger to my small wedding. We want our wedding to be small and intimate. My partner already has seven kids and three grandkids, which takes up an already large part of our guest list. My younger sister is also not being permitted to bring her partner of 1.5 years for similar reasons. She's mad at me for drawing the line and has been complaining to her dad trying to get him to change his mind. Am I the asshole? What the fuck is your problem? Is my response. <laughs> yeah, Only so... 11 months? Yeah. Which, and also, she's been dating this person for 11 months and, you, and you're calling them, like, basically a stranger? What? Are you, like, not involved in your stepdaughter's life at all? On one hand, I do understand wanting to keep the wedding small. Yeah. On the other hand, you can't have different rules for different people that you set subjectively. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. Total BS. Because, like, if, if you're gonna say, alright, we want to keep it small so we don't want, like, my younger sister's boyfriend or the future stepdaughter's boyfriend to come, okay, then you say no, like, partners that you're not married to. Yeah. Right? And then you're, yeah, then disinviting the older brother's girlfriend, but, like... But if you're that concerned... Yeah, yeah, and then that frees up one more spot. Or you decide you can make room for two more people, mm -hmm. and everybody gets to bring the person they're dating. Which, frankly... Like, a wedding being an expensive thing already, I feel like adding two people is not the biggest deal in the world. I don't know. Well, I, I will say it kind of depends on the venue, too, because sometimes, like... Yeah, yeah, there is that. There is very limited capacity. I've been to those kinds of weddings before where you could literally fit, like, ten people in the building. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Um, so I, I get that part of it, at, at least. Mm -hmm. um, we, we don't necessarily know the details. But um, I, I'd also like to know how much older her older brother is, since she's making claims of ageism. Yeah, I would kind of like that detail, but I'm the fact that she says like that her fiance already has seven kids makes me mm -hmm. assume that this is just like a family with like where the oldest is like ten to fifteen years older than the youngest. Could be. But so. we don't know what order they're in in the age, like, in the birth order. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. I would like to dive into some of the... Hello, Luna! <laughs> A rare loony appearance in the lap. Hi, kitty. Show your... Show me that face. Let me see that pretty face. <laughs> oh, it's so silly. gorgeous. She refuses to pay attention to me when I want her attention. Luna. Rude. No, don't look at me. Look over. <laughs> She'll get around to it. The difference in the way you handle her versus the way I handle Oliver. If he was here, I'd just be like... Aw. Here. <gasps> Little girl, look up. <gasps> Hello, gorgeous. Me. There. How cute. There. there we go. There we go. Anyway. <gasps> um... She's too short. <laughs> little baby you're just tiny yeah uh most popular comment i'm saying yta but not for say not for saying no but for diminishing her <laughs> and your sister's relationships and saying 11 months and 18 months isn't long enough to earn a spot i think more tact was needed yeah e yeah and i think that's one of the big issues here too is that yeah, she is essentially judging their relationships and what is a good or worthwhile relationship and not. Mm -hmm. And also, like, trying to make predictions, essentially. Like, oh, they've been dating three years. They probably will get married, and then I won't regret having had her at the wedding. Yeah, like, one, well, no, you don't know that. 
And it's like the the brother with a three year relationship, they could break up next week, and this eleventh one relationship could be a lifetime marriage. Like you no, don't know that. There's two other things. Uh, another comment that is not the way to start a marriage by alienating one of his children. Highly relevant. And yeah. also, I like this person who said, seems a little hypocritical considering your future husband is probably in someone's wedding photos from his wife with his first failed marriage. You're the asshole no matter how you try to justify it. Yeah. And where's the other one? Not gonna lie, I would find it hilariously ironic in 10 years if your son is in the middle of a divorce with the girl who was good enough to invite, but your daughter is insanely happy with the boy you shunned. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would be really fucking ironic. But here's an interesting question. Is there, like, any length of relationship that is too short to want them, potentially, in wedding pictures? Because, like, obviously, if it's, like, a first date, like, <laughs> that would be a bit much. But, like, I feel like there's got to be a threshold, right? A couple months, maybe? Yeah, but I've I've had plenty that last a couple months and I don't even remember their names to me sometimes. I'm also really not the person to ask because I've dated two people total. I yeah. don't know. Yeah, no, I just I feel like there there is a distinction. I just don't know what it is. Because, yeah, I definitely think if this person is dating somebody, even if it's been a couple months and they're not very serious, I wouldn't want them in my pictures because... Yeah. You know, then it's just weird and awkward later on. But at mm -hmm. least if they were in like a committed relationship, you can be like, oh, yeah, this is when I was dating so and so, you know, and it's just a memory, but it's not weird. Yeah, I guess I, I get it a little bit, but she's going about it horribly. No, again, it's even if they were actually married, you don't know who's going to stay together and who's not going to stay together. Piece of paper mm -hmm. doesn't really mean anything in that way. Yeah, it really doesn't. Divorces exist. Uh, and this person was judged the asshole by the Reddit community. Can't say I'm particularly surprised, as I really kind yeah. of agree. Yeah. I, I don't know why anybody would even think that that was going to be okay. Like, let's choose which of our children's partners are allowed to come to our wedding. <laughs> yeah, no, that's. I don't think that's going to end well in any scenario. Oh, hello, son. No. Nope. What do you think? Are you gonna uh, be visible? You just missed your cousin. Yeah? That's not right there. He says, there's my pillow. There's my pillow. That's your spot, bud. Get on up there. He's like, well, now that you say that, I don't want it. No, no scratching the couch. Hey. Mm-hmm. Shithead. You're such a problem. Anyway, um, I stumbled across another Am I the Asshole literally while I was eating dinner right before we started recording. Uh, if we would like to talk about yeah. this one, it's rather short and it has not been judged yet. Oh, okay. So, <clears throat> am I the asshole for returning my wife's homemade birthday gift and telling her I don't want it? I then went out and bought what I actually wanted and I need you to reserve judgment because it sounds horrible. I know. Mm -hmm. I need an outside opinion on this. This has been an ongoing issue that I have talked to her multiple times about. My wife makes less money than me and is the type of person who prefers to make her own gifts for people. The issue is she will do this even if the person doesn't want this. I'll use myself as an example. For the past few years, she has made every single, she has made every single gift I've been given. No matter what I ask for, I get a homemade gift. Doesn't matter if it's cheap or not. Last Christmas, I asked for a few things and I got a homemade scarf. I always get her stuff she wants. I've talked to her about this multiple times. My birthday was yesterday and I asked her to give me a book. It was only $25 and I sent her the link. I opened the gift and she made me some homemade bookmarks. It wasn't even the type of bookmarks I like. They were made from fabric and I like the wooden ones. I must have made a face because she asked what was wrong. I told her I didn't want these. I made it so clear what I actually wanted and I have talked to her so many times. I handed them back and went out to buy the book. We had a big fight when I got back and she claims I'm being ungrateful and a jerk. Here's the thing. Mm -hmm. If someone explicitly says, to you, like if someone says, they're like, oh, what do you want for your birthday? And someone says, I would like this book here's the link to the exact thing that I am asking you for. And it's like, 
and again, it's not particularly expensive or anything. Why? They, they told you exactly what they want. I... I think the returning it the is rude. Yeah, but but here's the thing. Nowhere in there does it say she asked him what he wanted. This is true. And that's why I want to go with a little bit of both the asshole. That's kind of what I'm leaning to, because even if she didn't explicitly say, what do you want for your birthday? If he said in some form of like, oh, hey, I know, like, you know, this is coming up. I've been looking at this. Here's the link. Like, I think that's a very clear message of please get me this book for my birthday. Thank you. But he can clearly buy the book himself. That's not the point of a gift. This is also true. You know, like, people just take for granted that people are supposed to give them stuff. And it's like, no, it is a nice thing. It is a thoughtful thing. You shouldn't get to pick somebody's gift for you. Like, that to me is a bit insane. I understand if they ask, like, mm -hmm. if they're like, I don't know what to get you. Please tell me. Like, that's one thing. Yeah. But if you're just like, oh, I don't like the stuff you get me, so you get me this, because I actually want this. That's shitty, and I do kind of wish we had a little up. bit more detail. But if she did ask, or like, be like, oh, is there anything you're thinking about? And he was like, here you go. And she's like, okay. Disregard. I don't feel like she did, because he's like, I asked her for a few things at Christmas. Like, yeah, it sounds definitely. like he's asking for things, not answering a question that she asked. Yeah, I definitely do think we need more detail, but if you are asking and and someone is repeatedly telling you exactly what they want and that is like well within your budget and you don't get it, come on man, listen. And he doesn't say he repeatedly asks. Or it just like if this is a thing that's happened before, I don't know. I'm definitely agreeing with you on the little bit like mm, you both have the potential to be assholes here depending on yeah. exactly what the details of the situation are. And this actually hasn't been judged yet, so. Yeah, I mean, honestly, he says he wants a book. Okay, you can go buy that book yourself. You said that it's cheap. Um, she worked on these things for you. She made them. They're mm -hmm. with love. It's not just about giving you, like, possessions, but giving something that she put, you know, her effort into. And it costs nothing to simply say thank you. Yeah, and, and like, obviously, the, like the fact that she did make the book bookmarks, spe bookmarks specifically, like, so she is paying attention. Yeah. yeah. Lacking a little detail here, it kind of could go either way, but I think the, uh, the main takeaway is ask your partner's questions and listen to those answers. Yeah, and we don't necessarily know her thinking in this either, like, why... Mm -hmm. Like, was there maybe a specific reason she didn't buy the book? Because bookmarks made out of fabric, that's pretty cheap. A $25 book, he says it's within her budget, but, like, mm -hmm. sounds like they have separate finances. Yeah, there was a so little how bit... how does he necessarily know? Hold on, where is it? Um... Oh, big stretch. Uh, he goes into their different, I make about 30k more than her, we have shared accounts and I pay for most things, she makes about 40k before taxes, she could also just use, so their finances are, he's referencing a shared account, so mm -hmm. I would decently intermingled would be my guess from just that. Yeah. But. I don't know, but I, I, I feel like he is an asshole for essentially refusing homemade gifts because it's not the thing he specifically asked for, even though he could buy that thing himself. Yeah, that's but, rude. But on the other side of it, if he has told her that he does not want handmade gifts, which I believe he says that he she is aware of, like, I think he phrased it as, like, she is aware that I don't want this. Yeah. Um. But then she does it anyway. That's also kind of asshole-ish. Yeah, you're kind of not, like, even if you do like to make things for your partner, like, I don't know. I guess if I did, I mean, this is just me. Like, if I did know that, like, oh, they want this, but I also just like making things. Like, I, maybe a, a bookmark, like a mm -hmm. cross-stitch bookmark. The new book. And the book. Ah. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Nice That's kind of what I would do. Um... 
But yeah, again, just talk to your people. And pay yeah, attention to the but- answers. It's it's hard not knowing her perspective on this either, and like what her reasoning was, because mm-hmm. it's it it couldn't possibly be like I know you want this, but hey, I'm not going to do it. Uh, here's some bookmarks. You know, it's like I would like it was. I would hope not. Yeah, it's not like it was malicious. So we don't know the reason why she did what she did. Yeah. So there's there's got to be some reason. We just don't know what it is. Yeah. Good talk. Yeah, but uh. As somebody who has way too much stuff and is actively trying to get rid of stuff, I would be bothered if somebody gave me things they knew I didn't want, because then I just have more stuff taking up space. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm going with both a little BTA here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have found myself on my path, like, because my mom will still ask and be like, oh, send me. She still says things like, oh, send me your Christmas list so I can give it to Santa, because, you know, parents are fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I have had to, I've been very specific the past, like, two years. I've been like, if there's no clothes on the list, please do not get me clothes. (laughs) Because I, again, I talked about closet downsizing last episode. That has Mm -hmm. been an ongoing process forever because I've had so much stuff where it was like, oh yeah, like, this is cute. I, like, this is pretty cute. I'll wear this because I was not fully dressing the way that I liked for most of my life and now Mm. I'm just like actually finally going all in on that so now I'm just like if it's if I unless I am asking for it specifically please do not give me clothes yeah that's why I keep an Amazon wish list to help out people that's probably smart yeah because then people can just go and look at it and I don't have to have a conversation if they need help they can go and look at that or they can just not um that's all I have down for us. How do we feel about about the worsening now? Would we like to begin the meditation? Sure. <laughs> you are without doubt the worst pirate I've ever heard of. Listen, Q-Ball, you only make it worse. Thanks, that even makes it worse. It's worse than you know. It usually is. I think that's the worst thing I've ever heard. That's the worst goodbye I've ever heard. And you stole it from a movie. How marvelous. How are we worse this week, besties? So many ways, as always. The floor is yours. <laughs> um, well, I already mentioned Flower City Comic Con. And I, I told myself, I was like, I'm only going to get like maybe a couple things from the vendor room. And of course, that never happens. Um, I got five total Funkos. I got a four pack of Evolution Funkos. Nice. There's like Evie, Jilteon... Can't remember which other ones for it. Flareon, Vaporeon, because those are the OG and one three. Is, oh, maybe I was gonna say it was either Vaporeon or Glaceon. I can't remember. It's sitting right there. I just just out of my reach. Oh, as I would assume it's the first three. Otherwise, yeah. What is their organizational system? Yeah, but I had seen it sitting there, and I looked online, and I was like, I wonder how much these usually are. They go for sixty online. And there were there was actually another vendor at the con that had them for sixty, and this person had it up for thirty bucks. And I was like, "Am I, you know, called my friend? Am I reading that correctly? Does that Don't say thirty? I do. Yeah. <laughs> so I did get those, and I got a, a fairy tale Funko of, of Grateful Buster, which is just sitting right here. Nice. I got a very cute, uh, like purse that is Evolutions as well. Oh, oh, you sent me that. <laughs> that was fucking adorable. Sure. It's really nice. It's like a really soft, nice material, and it's like convertible, like hip bag, crossbody bracelet. Hell yeah, love um, it. And the art, the artist who made that makes them is like really nice. Um, I love that. I was wearing my my Evolution t shirt, and I got the Evolution bag, and I got the Funkos fully decked <laughs> out. Yeah, and every single booth I went to, as soon as they saw my t shirt, they were like, "Oh, I think we have Evolution, blah blah blah, whatever." And I'm like. I am such a walking target with this. You like, really are. You and... you cultivated a brand. It's like yes, I do. I do love the Eevees, but <laughs> uh, so yeah, that was that was nice. And I we can sort of see it. It's leaning against my sewing machine back there. I got this art print that's like a realistic drawing of uh, Totoro. Aww. And you know the other characters in the movie. So like even the the two girls are drawn like as realistic people. 
it's yeah. pretty it was pretty cool. Cute. Um yeah, I feel like there's other stuff I got, but I don't quite remember. <laughs> I'm just blocking it out. Oh, I did get another evolution blind box thing. <laughs> Turned out to be Umbreon. Aw. Yeah. There yeah. really isn't um, there's no such thing as a bad evolution. No, although when I was purchasing the blind box, um, <laughs> she asked which one I was hoping to get. Um, and I was like, well, Leafeon's my favorite. And she was like, oh, we might have a Leafeon, you know, in one of those, I'm not sure. And I was like, well, Sylveon would be second. Well, but then <laughs> I just kept like, I was like, and I, was like I don't have them all. I was like, I don't have them all ranked. <laughs> she just was like laughing. I'm like, no, I've literally ranked all. All eight evolutions, yeah. I dig um, it. In terms of favorite. So. Oh, wait, what's your least favorite, though? That, see, that's, I know that technically because I have them ranked, there has to be a least favorite. That's just how ranking works. I have a least favorite, and I'm not ashamed to say it. Interesting. It's Jolteon. Interesting. Mine's Flareon. As long as it's not Vaporeon. <laughs> I fucking love Vaporeon. The little sounds. Actually, the Glaceon sound is like my favorite. I love his little <laughs> tail, his little fins. That's one of the things I love about Leafeon, his leaf tail. Sweet angel baby. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, so there was there was that. Um, video gaming continues. I haven't played that much Fallout recently, but... Uh, Nintendo Switch is finally telling me how much I've been playing Animal Crossing. How much Animal Just Crossing have today. you been playing? It currently says 55 hours or more. Um, and so I did the math. That is an average of about three and a half hours a day since I started playing it. I love that for you. Every single day. Imagine every single day playing a game for three and a half hours. I don't have to imagine. Animal Crossing came out right at the beginning of lockdown. <laughs> But we're not in lockdown. I know, I'm a functioning still, adult with a job. Do you have any fucking idea how many weeks of my life were just Animal Crossing and nothing else? There were multiple days in this like week and a half since I started playing that I was out of town. I spent an entire day at a con when I didn't get to play at all. Tragic. <laughs> so... It's not even like it's it it's it averages out to three and a half hours a day, but it's really more than that to you know have it actually average that way. To yeah. um, compensate. Also, to that. I'm so. over four hundred hours in Fallout now, like for real, not just rounding up. I have crossed that threshold. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm nowhere near that. Um, but there there is one other major way that I am much worse this week that I have sent you some texts about. Yes. The process has begun. The process has begun. That's very exciting. I am making this <sighs> pit boy. I decided to embark on this journey. I love it. it we're, has... gonna have, we're gonna have the sickest Vault Dweller cosplays. It. I have to print 64 individual parts. Amazing. Um, each of them has to be painted. Um, I sent you my hardware list when I was you going did. shopping. It was very complicated. <laughs> I got screws and nuts galore here. Um, the problem is 3D print models are always in the metric system, and it's like really hard to track down, so I haven't gotten everything yet. I also yeah. need to find electronics components because it's supposed to have orange LED lights, so I got to find like the right kind of switch and battery holder. Wow. Um, yeah. And I, I sent you a picture of the Excel file that I'm working from that lists out every part, the number of each part I need, the color each one has to be printed in, that's the color coding, Amazing. and how long each part takes. Um, and it's a total, oh, I, oh no, I still have it open. Yeah, I do. It's going to take a total of, where'd it go? 27 hours and 33 minutes of printing time. Yeah, damn. For one. For one, I'm going to do two, one for each of us, um, <laughs> but I'm, I'm doing yours first. So uh, you're too kind. It's 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 a lot. Uh, and also because oh, the take the, your time, because I still need to put together like a, a 
an act a better yeah. suit than yeah. my OG attempt. Yeah. As much as I'm proud yeah. of that one it, for yeah. what it was at the time, we got to step it up real. We got to step it up big time. Yeah. Well, and another big hurdle is that the guide for putting it together is not good. Um, there's a lot of comments on the page of everyone being like, this is terribly written. It skips steps. And the person who made it is like, yeah, no, I was terrible at writing guides back when I made this, <laughs> but doesn't I mean, fix it. Mm, that's the thing. I feel like that really can be such a bitch, though, because as you're doing it, you're like, oh, yeah, this makes perfect sense. Yeah. But. Well, yeah, because you know what you mean to to do or what you yeah. want people to do that doesn't well, necessarily come across. Part of the problem that I ran into when I was um, helping, god this was back in college, when I was helping Sasha put together the instructions for running the old TV studio because mm, mm, mm -hmm. I would be doing something and I'd be like oh yeah obviously like this is the next step like that's totally self-explanatory and, and then people yes. would actually try to follow the instructions I'd written and be like oh what and I was like oh shit sorry like so I yeah like Yes, you should go back and fix it, but also, like, I get it. I really do. I've been that person. Oh, yeah. I mean, I have to write assignment descriptions all the time, and in my head, I'm like, I know what I want you to do, and I think I'm expressing it, and then they'll ask a question, I'm like, that's a good question. I should have put You're that on so there. You're so right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but these are the pieces I spray-painted today. I wanted to put them together. Oh, those look so sick. This is, this is part of the back of it. I love it. The color's not quite showing up right on the, the camera, but I didn't paint the other side yet because <laughs> it was just is like amazing. Um, yeah, Ooh, that reminds These are three me. I gotta. Parts. I have to repaint your scythe before mm. November. Mm -hmm. I will get to that. Yeah, but it's gonna take a long time to get everything printed and painted and assembled, and that just means I've got time, and that is yeah. totally okay. I yeah. swear to God, I had something else for myself that I cannot fucking mm -hmm. remember. Huh. And I do this to myself frequently. I'm mentally trying to think of all your categories. I know. Oh, well. Fan fiction? Video there's video? that, and I think it might be one of the other things. I'm, I might be forgetting another thing, but the fan fiction thing. Um, remember how I said I was doing, like, the tag team fan fiction thing? Yeah. We finished up one of them. It's, like, 20,000 yeah. fucking words. And then started a second one immediately. Yeah, that's what uh, made me think of it. Because I remember you mentioning that previously. And I was like, oh, I believe she was on some fan fiction bullshit recently. I am very <laughs> so. much on some fan fiction bullshit recently. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that. And I swear to God, there was something else. And it's really bothering me that I can't remember what it was. Son of a bitch. It's not games. I already talked about that. I talked about the fanfiction thing. Huh. Well. Can't have been that crafting? important. Crafting? Oh, when I was at Power Wolf, Kyle pointed out to me that I had the letters in the wrong order on my Big Dumb Monsters Network bracelet, so I fixed that today. <laughs> because you made that at Mid-Hudson, right? Yeah, because I was fucking shit-faced. <laughs> So everyone else who has a Excellent. BDMN bracelet, check yours, just to be sure. Oh, mine's in the next room. I really <laughs> it's killing me. I was looking at the the one that I think Nick put his. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, let me toss that up there. <laughs> That's exactly well, what I had, by the way. Uh, I had BMDN instead of BDMN. You know... Um, I was just saying when we went to Gogo Bordello last week that we should, that I think we should make a network playlist. Right? Yes, Where we, we absolutely and I was gonna, have to start that, by the way. And I was going to do that and then like put a message in the group chat. And I, I was just going to call it like Monster Mash because I thought that was kind of funny. Incredible. But now I'm thinking it should be called Big Bunk Dumpsters. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I'm here for it. I think you should do that. <laughs> Just big mung dumpsters. That's yeah, the, no that's other the kind. List. You know what? No, the I network isn't that. needed. I think one of the other ways that I'm worse is that I am like in the concrete planning stage of whatever happens happens psychological torture edition. Hmm. Nice. So it's been talked about for a long time. The anticipation is building. That's coming, and I think uh, Chris was involved in this last night. I think we're worse because we came up with an official network cocktail. Ooh. <laughs> Um, it's just a Bloody Mary with, like, a packet of THC powder in it. It's called a Big Dumb Monster. 
You don't like Bloody Marys. I don't, but... Okay, I, I guess I'll have to watch it to learn. I meant to join y'all last night, and then I was playing Animal Crossing and lost track of time. I'm so proud. <laughs> I looked at the clock, I was like, does that say 30? Shit. <laughs> we'll be serving them at Saratoga. Yes, we will be. Can um, you get packets of THC? Is that just a thing? Talk to the big man. I just, I didn't know that was a thing and never came up in my life. <laughs> yeah, you very much can. So, um, if we're acting like insane people at Saratoga, you know why. <laughs> just because of who we are as people. Because of who we are as people, but it's also being exacerbated <laughs> by the big dumb monster cocktail. Very mm -hmm. proud of us. Man, what the- hmm. I know no, as I'm trying soon to come as up with a fun name for it. I know as soon as we stop rolling, it's it's going to just hit me like lightning. And you know what I'm going to do as soon as we stop rolling? Start Check that Animal bracelet. Crossing? Oh. Because oh, no. <laughs> now I'm really curious. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I really think that is it, though, unfortunately. Oh, I did have an idea. Uh, since we okay. are finishing up anime movie month, we've got Suzume tomorrow and then Tokyo Godfathers next Thursday. Mm -hmm. I was thinking for the four spooky season streams that we get to do before uh, Shadow starts up, mm -hmm. what, do we want to maybe do like actually kind of scary? Do yeah. we want to actually be a little afraid? I think that could be fun. Maybe three out of four, and we do, a, like, a fun kind of culty classic one for the fourth? I'm here for that. Alright. So, I'll like have a, to... You know, a reanimator. Yes. Because, God, the fucking I mean. vibes of that were immaculate. But yeah. I will have to look through my letterbox, but I have some things on there that I... that people have said, like, this will fuck you up. And oh, I would okay. like to explore to that. Like... <laughs> Fuck you up more. Let's put it that way. Ooh. Chris has a suggestion for the fun one. Return of the Living Dead. I would have to watch the OG Night of the Living Dead, but I am down for that. <clears throat> so, there you go. I think we might have gotten that sorted. You would <laughs> not. Oh, no. I mean, I think I should probably watch it anyway, just because, but nice to know that the context is necessary. <laughs> Yeah. That's always a great sign. Hmm. Yeah. So, well, there's part of that sorted, and I have a couple ideas that I will send you, so you will know in advance what those movies are going to be if you would like to scare yourself along with us, and we've, you've got your movies for Anime Movie Month. Suzume is available on Netflix if anyone wants to watch that tonight or tomorrow before the stream. And I am not sure about Tokyo Godfathers, but I will check on that and let everybody know tomorrow night in case anyone wants to watch along for the final stream. And I think that's really all we've got going for the moment. The fourth one, the fourth one was Vaporeon, just to confirm. I just realized I could see them on the back of the box. Nice. I figured. <laughs> Just Makes in case sense. anybody out there was, like, you know, dying to know. Understandable. Um, yeah. You got anything important to announce network-wise? Or just in general? Or anything no. not important? No. No. Happens to the best of us. All right. Well, as always, thank you for fighting with us, friends. Uh, we appreciate each and every single one of you, and we'll be back again next week. Adios, y'all. This week's episode of the Fighting with Friends podcast was hosted by Bridget Kelly and Dr. Sarah Brooks. You can find other episodes of the podcast on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, or your other favorite listening platform. Catch us live on Twitch every Wednesday and Thursday. And for ad-free live broadcasts of the show, you can subscribe to our Twitch channels or consider donating to our Patreon for ad-free access to our entire library of past episodes and streams, as well as fun bonus content. Fighting with Friends is a member of the Big Dumb Monsters Podcast Network. Check out the links in the description for more episodes from us and from all of the shows on the network. 
Thanks for listening.